What's up you guys? So it's just new me and I got on here because now I want to talk about my actual um, experience with the USMLE step two. The video that I just recently posted was just talking about my prep and um, I know it cut off abruptly but I found out that my camera on my phone actually only gives me 11 minutes to record so it holds me accountable so I will make sure this video is with that within that parameter <laughs> um, even though today it says 18 minutes so I don't know what's going on but this video will not be that long so as far as my experience uh, with step two um, you know it was very nerve-wracking very very nerve-wracking I feel like I developed PTSD from step one <laughs> but um, you know I was just trying to prepare as much as I could because I knew I had to do very well on this exam and so you know my preparation material quickly and I put it in the other video but I felt that I definitely had enough preparation um, you world being my gold standard that I used um, taking all the NBMEs also doing my comp exam that my school provided and also uh, doing a free 120 I actually did the old one and the new one and doing the you world um, assessments and I just felt like that was enough for me. So going into the exam, my head was really on where my, I had my mentality of, I got it, I'm going to do what I came to do for this exam. I am going to get a 25 point at minimum increase. And so, you know, I just had to put my, my mind in that space because along going along the way, you will feel defeated. You will feel like what you're doing isn't enough you will feel like you know is this what i'm supposed to be doing you know like have i chosen the right path you know it just you have all of these emotions going on in your mind and you know i just did not want to give in to the, those feelings so every day i did like affirmations and stuff like that to try to help put my mind in a positive uh space and so doing that helped a lot when I got to the exam uh, the center, which was a prometric center uh, here in the area that I'm living, and the check-in person was just so, just so happy, so nice, and just very encouraging. And I really appreciated that because even though my mind was in a positive space, I still had a little bit of anxiety. And he really helped kind of level that playing field for me. And he was just like, it's just a test. Is just a test <laughs> and it's true it is just a test um, I did have a plan on how I was going to approach the test you know as far as like how many blocks I was gonna do before I took a break and all of that mm, I don't I mean if you want to do something like that just to ease your mind just so you have some type of plan I think it's fine but for me I didn't even follow the plan because the adrenaline was once I started the exam the adrenaline kicked in and I knew that I always had an issue with time when it came to exams and for those that follow me and have been following me this whole time during medical school you know that I got extra time accommodations the whole time in medical school for exams and I really you know attribute that having that to having good grades in medical school and being able to now graduate with a B plus average uh, from school. I wanted an A average, but I have a B plus average. And so that's what I will graduate with. Um, so, you know, with step one, I didn't have that. You know, the board didn't approve me to get any type of accommodation. So I had to push through step one, trying to answer those questions, reading those passages, and sometimes not really comprehending what the passage was saying and just focusing on answer every question kind of thing. And so, you know, I did a lot of guessing on step one um, because, you know, I, I just had that time factor and my whole focus was to finish the block. Um, in a couple of blocks in step one, I actually didn't answer, I think like some, sometimes five questions. So that definitely contributed to me having a very low score. Um, but this time I was like, you know what? I've practiced, I used UWorld as practice. I would do those time blocks every single day. And yes, my scores sucked initially, but you know, I was able to get through them and I just practiced reading faster and trying to comprehend. 
and trying to apply that. And that's how I went into step two. So that adrenaline was just rushing when the test started. And um, initially I was like, okay, I'm going to take two blocks and take a break, like 15 minute break. And then I'm going to take, you know, another two blocks or what have you and take a break, you know, and then I'm going to take one block and then take my lunch. And um, because I think we had what, eight blocks, eight or nine blocks. I can't even remember. It feels like a blur, <laughs> but we had several blocks that we had to do. And, um, you know, each block was, you know, long. We had one block that had around, I would say about 30 something questions versus the 40 some versus the 40 questions only because uh, they were very long pharmaceutical passages that we had to really go through that had multiple questions on them. So those two blocks or one block, I think it was just one block, you know, had less than like, you know, maybe five questions less than 40. That block I finished and I still had like five minutes left. So I was very proud of myself. Um, but I ended up not following that plan as far as like, you know, how I wanted to do two blocks and take a break. I ended up doing three blocks and then taking a 15 minute break. Um, and during that break, I had like a protein bar, um, and just some water. Cause that's basically, you know, I didn't bring a lot of food. Um, I brought two protein bars. I brought a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and I brought a large, large, uh, bottle of water. And that was all that I had. Um, I also, oh, I also had a couple of, um, like breath mints only because for me, when I am focusing, I usually like my study, I usually either eat ice and I know that's bad. You shouldn't eat ice and it's crushed ice. So it's not hard on my teeth, but I usually have something in my mouth and it's usually ice or, um, some type of hard candy or even chewing gum. And it's probably a bad habit to do when you're studying and to get accustomed to that because when you don't have it. Like for me, my focus is kind of off. So I think that was a bad choice for me, but nevertheless, I did it. So I had like some breath mints with me and I would like, when I found myself kind of like losing focus, I would just put a breath mint in my mouth. I would take a little small break, go outside and, um, you know, it's like two minute break, not very long, check out, put the breath mint in my mouth and then come back in, check in, come back in. So it'll be like two, three minute break. Um, and then I would go back to doing my, you know, test, but I ended up doing that and, um, you know, you can't, it's really hard to do unscheduled breaks. Like you can't really do that. They will like flag you. Um, so I was only able to do the breath mint thing like once. Um, and then after that, I was just, you know, do two more. I did after the third, three blocks in the break, I did two blocks, which is, you know, total five Then I took my lunch and my lunch was about 20 minutes. Um, and I just really just relaxed and just went out, you know, in the hallway, sat down and just kind of like, just took a breather. And then I went back into the center area and sat in a chair and it was really no one there in the room with me. You know, it was just me and the, the check-in person and he didn't bother me or anything like that. And, you know, I just sat there for a little bit, maybe five minutes. And I said, you know what, let me just go ahead and push through. I'm halfway there. Like I'm more than halfway there. So I basically went back in and got my testing hat on again. And I knocked out the rest of those blocks with like ease. And when I was answering the questions, I really felt like at first I was like, aren't they like, are they serious? Like these questions seem a bit easy. And then I was like, oh my God, I hope I'm not getting tricked, you know, <laughs> that's what I felt. Um, but I say, you know what, trust my gut and just answer the questions. Don't second guess myself. That's a flaw that I have. A lot of times I will answer a question and then I will go back and I will change my answer. And the first answer was correct. So I had to condition myself not to do things like that. And that takes time because we want to do well on our exams. And you know, if you have a tendency to second guess and it's just your nature to do that, you're going to do that on any exam. And so, you know, I just try to make a conscious effort not to do it. And so basically I said to myself, if I know the answer is wrong and I actually know the correct answer, I will change it. If I am unsure 
and I don't know the correct answer, I'm not changing my first answer. So that is what I stuck to and that's what I did. And I think that's also why I was able to finish the blocks without, you know, being like too, too rushed. I mean, each block I had usually about, I would say between one minute to 30 seconds uh, left. There was only maybe one or two blocks where, you know, <laughs> I pressed the last one and it was like, okay, it's done. You know, where I didn't have any more time. For the most part, you know, that was after I had done several blocks and I was kind of getting fatigued because testing fatigue is definitely a real thing. Um, after about the fifth block or even sixth block, for me, I was really done. Like I was really tired, um, but I had to just push through. I had to really push through because I knew that this was temporary and I knew after I can just kind of relax and breathe and so that is why I was able to push through and I encourage anyone that's you know having anxiety or you know trying to do all these blocks as you're preparing for your step one or step two just take a breather you know take a breath and chill about it you know because it really helps when you're kind of at ease and calm you will be able to get through it um, of course, I have some people that I know that didn't finish and, you know, we were rooting for each other. And one of my colleagues, you know, he failed it twice already and he wasn't able to um, participate in the match this year. So, you know, my heart goes out to those people. But, you know, you have to just take your time, prepare as much as you can and trust your practice scores. Trust those practice scores. If you are consistently getting over the passing score then just know yeah you will pass how high i don't know if you are consistently getting below that trust that you're not going to pass and that was what happened to my colleague you know he was consistently getting low scores um i think he only got like you know one time where he actually passed and i was just like i don't know man you know you maybe you want to wait and he was like no 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 I'm going to take it because I really feel like this is not, you know, really where I'm going to get. And he just, you know, wasn't trusting the scores. He even took the comp exam that our school provided and he did not pass that. So, you know, um, but, you know, I just say just be encouraged, you guys. It is definitely doable. Um, it is hard, but you can do it. I did it. And, you know, I got a 25 point increase from my step one score. And no, it wasn't my goal score, but, you know, it was enough for me to be able to get interviews for this match season. And I, I thank God for that. Um, and I also am glad that I was able to take the exam in the time frame where, it, you know, I took it on October 10th. That was the last day that you can actually take the exam to really get your score back. So when you would submit your residency application through ERAS, the programs would have your score. And, you know, they use that, even though some programs didn't have the filters, they use that score to give you uh, invitations for interviews. So that was my whole goal and I was able to do that. Um, so yeah, that was my experience. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, I am going to continue pushing out videos now that I'm back on YouTube. Um, and yeah, if you have anything you want me to talk about, just let me know in the comment section. Um, don't forget to sub subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Also, if this video was helpful, please share it. Um, all those things help support my channel and help my information get out to more people. So I will talk to you guys later and have a good day. Bye.